One issue that is raised by using those Old Testament titles that have been applied to the people of Israel now to these new Christian believers is the question of whether of what happens to the people of Israel in this. Has it all been transferred to these new followers of Christ? And the epistle doesn't answer that question directly because it never mentions the people of Israel. It's speaking almost entirely directly to these new believers and using these titles. But I think by implication, when they are made heirs of all of the promises, even though they don't even maybe know what all those promises were at this point, that they are joined in some way with the people of Israel and have become, as, the, as uh, Paul often writes, uh, uh, adopted members of this community. Uh, the, the baptism is looked at as adoption, as sons and daughters of God. And the question is, you know, what does that mean now for people who haven't been through the long sufferings of the people of Israel and haven't uh, been the light of the world, bearing witness for all of these de uh, generations and centuries? And basically, if that, even if that question isn't directed, uh, answered directly, uh, this epistle is saying that now these t people also have that same role of enduring suffering for the sake of Christ and by so doing, bearing witness, being uh, uh, holy people uh, in the midst of an unholy uh, society and testifying, therefore, to the God that they love and serve. Uh, it doesn't solve the question, but it does at least not license uh, any kind of argument for the rejection of the people of Israel because these new people are called by those same titles. <laughs>